Hello everybody out there watching on YouTube and welcome to race number 35 slash chase race number 9, the penultimate race of season 3 in an SCRA Marvel Studios Cup Series. I'm Levi McIntyre, the voice of the in an SCRA Marvel Studios Cup Series, here to welcome you to the California 400 at California Speedway. We're getting set for 30 laps of racing here at this two mile racetrack. Now before we look at the starting lineup, as always, let's take a look at the chase standings. So after last week at Old Spice, Dylan Jacobs' points lead extended to 19 points over Matt McIntyre, 25 over Paul Minnick, 45 over Austin LaPlante, 47 over Benjamin Miles, 56 over James Qualls, 71 over Chris Dollarton, Joshua Sakuli, 78 points behind, 81 points ahead of Charles Sanford, 87 ahead of James McLeod, 93 ahead of David Rivera, and 150 over Rafael Leduc. So basically, scenarios for this race going into the finale at Kansas. So guys like Matt McIntyre will have to stay within 30 points of Dylan Jacobs for to race today. So Matt McIntyre better hope he doesn't wreck out and Dylan Jacobs somehow gets a good finish. Because if he stays within 40 points of Dylan Jacobs, he'd still be mathematically in contention. Same thing goes for Paul Minnick. For Austin LaPlante, he's going to have to get a good run and finish ahead of Dylan Jacobs by at least six positions. For Benjamin Miles, it'd have to be at least eight positions. James Qualls, it would have to be at least 17 positions. The long shots are Joshua Sakuli and Chris Dollarton. They have a lot of work to do. Same with Charles Sanford. Charles Sanford is the borderline driver. McLeod and Rivera and LaDuc are mathematically out. Sanford is the borderline driver. He's 81 points behind, so he would have to hope to win the race today and Dylan Jacobs finish last if he has any shot of staying in. Kind of the same for Joshua Sakuli. Dollarton, he could afford to get a top five, but he have to hope Dylan Jacobs finishes in the back. Qualls, Miles, and LaPlante are going to have to hope for solid days while Jacobs has a mediocre day. Menick and McIntyre have to stay within where they are currently in order to make it in mathematically for next week. But anyways, let's take a look at the starting lineup. Starting in the last row is Austin, LaPlante, and Zach Flickinger. Top 10, Chris Dollarton is on the pole for today. Starting next to him is Ashlyn Boyd. Row 2, Jay Jefferson, Jake Baskinger. Row 3, JT Bryan, Jake Rogers. Row 4, Preston Bloor, Tim Walsh. And then row 5, Dorian Facepuncher and Tim Fiegel. With that said, let's get the command to fire engines for the California 400 at California Speedway. Drivers, start your engines. All the cars rolling out for their one pace lap around this racetrack. So we were back here in the second race of the season, immediately after Daytona. And California always is a very good track to go to because we always see some good constant passing, as well as pitch strategy, particularly within the fuel mileage range. We've had many great fuel mileage wins here at this racetrack in the past. Could we see another one of those today? You never know. But I got a feeling some of these drivers are going to be a little more aggressive than they usually would be. And that's because for some drivers, it's pretty much do or die 
for the championship in hopes of being mathematically in contention for next week at Homestead. And also for some drivers, they're one to try to finish out their seasons on a high note. So we're going to see some great racing here today, so we should be in for quite the ride. Coming out of turn four now, pace car pulling in the pit road, and you all know what time it is. It's time to boogity 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 go racing. Chris Dollerton led that lap, but a caution comes out on the first lap, and it's a multi-car wreck. Dylan Poteet sustained big damage. Same with Tim Fiegel. Uh, Pichu London was in it. Anthony McCrory, Zach Flickinger, William Brock, Seth Cole, last week's winner. Dylan Thoreau and Jonathan Zorling was in it. Dylan Young. The first car I got to send around was Ashlyn Boyd and James Qualls, a chaser. That just probably killed his chances of making it for mathematical contention next week at Kansas. David Rivera was in it. Points leader Dylan Jacobs, however, did get a piece of it. I don't know if it's going to force him out of the race. I don't know. It'll be interesting because he did get involved. You can see the buckle on his hood and a little bit of that rear end damage. But yeah, the first car that I saw got sent around was the 10 of Ashlyn Boyd. And some strategy of one car electing to stay out, and that's Joshua Sakuli. So he is definitely one to try and gain as much points as he possibly can. So Joshua Sakuli will be your leader when we go back to racing. But let's go ahead and take a look at the replay of what brought the caution out for the first time today here at California. So pretty much some drivers try to make it five wide, and look at how sideways the 10 car is. He was very, very loose on the high side close to the wall and as he was trying to catch it came down in front of Jake Baskinger and that forced him up into the outside wall and there's when Tim Fiegel gets collected and then it's just a stack up from that point on there you see all those guys coming in Qualls Jacobs oh and the eight of Fiegel actually went upside down for for a quick barrel roll and he continues to flip and actually, oh man, he landed right in the side of Pichu London's machine. And there you see McCreary was in it, and Poteet and Seth Cole get into it. As we look at the TV2 cameras, there you see all that smoke. Cars getting into one another off of four. The 10 actually went up in the air. I wonder how that happened. Oh, it was contact right there from Dylan Thoreau and then right in front of Zorlin and Flickinger. Kyle Keefe, I don't know how in the world he didn't get involved. Let's actually look back at Kyle Keefe's perspective. Because I think he made it through without damage. Let's watch the 42. It's all hap unfolding in front of him. Oh, no, he got a little piece of the 01 of William Brock, but I don't see visible damage, so the 42 might get away with very minimal damage and might still be up to speed. Flickinger, I saw he got spun around, but I don't think he hit nothing, so he should be okay. But yeah, quite a lot of drivers caught up in this, including the points leader, Dylan Jacobs. We'll be curious to see what happens to his car when we get back to racing, but let's go ahead and take you to the restart. Here at California. Well, after that first caution for the big one, we got uh, 10 cars, actually 11 cars, out of the race, and they include Ashlyn Boyd, Jonathan Zorlin, David Rivera, Dylan Young, James Qualls, Dylan Thoreau, Seth Cole, Anthony McCurry, Pichu London, Tim Fiegel, and Dylan Poti, with Jake Baskinger one lap down. 30 cars on the lead lap, 31 on track. Joshua Sakuli 
is your race leader since he was the only one who elected not to come down pit road under that first caution. So some interesting strategy for the 79 of Scully. Second is Chris Dollerton. Third is Pete, uh, Preston Plourd, excuse me. Fourth is Carson Gum. Fifth is Rafael Duke. Sixth is Tim Walsh. Seventh, Johnny Gardner. Eighth, JT Bryant. Ninth, Jay Jefferson. And then tenth, Benjamin Miles. Eleventh is Phil Parker. Twelfth is Mark Lane. Thirteenth, Chris Michaels. Fourteenth, DJ Curtis. Fifteenth, Trent Dunham. Sixteenth, James McLeod. Seventeenth, Jessica Sheldon. Eighteenth, Sean Galligan. Nineteenth, Charles Sanford. Twentieth, Dorian Facepuncher. 21st, Matt Haas, 22nd, Paul Minnick, 23rd, Emmanuel Hartnett, 24th, Matt McIntyre, 25th, Austin LaPlante, 26th, Zach Flickinger, 27th, Dylan Jacobs, 28th, Kyle Keith, 29th, Jake Rogers, and then 40th, William Brock with 41st, one lap down being Jake Baskinger, green flag back out with 25 laps to go. I'm actually going to go back here real quick to Dylan Jacobs and watch his speed rating just to see how off the pace he's going to be. And it looks like he is going to be really off the pace. He's going to be one of probably two drivers that is going to be really off the pace along with William Brock. Although he is seemingly within reach of the 87, but now here comes Kyle Keith underneath of him. And that is for position. Back up here at the front, Joshua Sakuli led that lap as Carson Gums got a run underneath the 79, and this is for the race lead. Carson Gum, who was one of uh, many drivers that pitted under that first caution, like I said, the 79 of Sakuli, the only one that stayed out. And look at JT Bryant, who was one of the dominant cars last week, or actually not last week, a couple weeks ago at Texas and ended up being forced out of the race for something strange that happened after a wreck. He's looking to get a little bit of redemption to get also his second win this season, third overall. But look at this, nearly four wide for the lead, and here comes Rafael Duke, who has had a very, very dismal chase. Been mathematically out since last week, but he definitely wants to finish his season and his career at Roush Racing on a high note. Because next season, remember, he's going to the number 77 for Furniture Row Racing. And underneath of him is uh, a Furniture Row car in Joshua Sakuli. But like I said, Sakuli will be moving to the 82 for Red Bull Racing next season. And Sakuli still keeping up here with everybody in behind him. And he still hangs on to the top spot. Jay Jefferson on pit road. Dorian Facepuncher looked like he came out of the pits as well. Dylan Jacobs back here still in the 27th spot. Just keeping an eye on him to see how things go. But you can definitely tell guys like Matt McIntyre and Paul Minnick and even Benjamin Miles are going to be very, very relieved that that happened because now they're going to be even closer to the 78 in terms of points going into next week at Kansas. And they were nearly... Five wide for second right there. You can go five wide and make it work. It's just you cannot lean on anybody. That's the big thing. Four wide, we see it all the time here. And look at Benjamin Miles moving himself up to second. Right now the highest running chaser. And then the next highest is Sakuli and then Leduc. Three wide for second is look at DJ Curtis, who is the highest non-chaser in the points overall in 13th. And oh man, they are five wide. I'm going to go to helicopter view to keep an eye on this. And it looks like they settle it out. That was good. Good job on those drivers to uh, separate themselves. Although still a little bit of contact between Gardner and Preston. But they keep it together for the time being as JT Bryant still hanging on to that top spot on the racetrack right now. Benjamin Miles has been losing a ton of spots 
since he got forced up high, pretty much you do not want to be on the outside or middle grooves. You want to be on the bottom to make these kinds of moves. As things are getting really racy, although here comes some drivers in the pit road, sounds like some drivers couldn't make it on gas for another five laps in order to go through halfway. But JT Bryant's still hanging on to the top spot, and then he's got two Rouseketeers right behind him. Chris Michaels, who's looking to try to finish his Marvel Studios Cup Series career on a high note. And then Rafaela Duke, who's right there behind them. And look at Chris Dollarton going for a run underneath of the 51 of McLeod. But he's slowing down. I think it's because he's coming into the pits. JT Bryant going to stay out. Same with James McLeod. And everybody else coming in the pit road. So only two cars staying out this time and that's JT Bryant and James McLeod and McLeod is a is a chaser right now although because 11 cars are done for today I think it is safe to say that no matter what really happens McLeod will be mathematically eliminated after today because the most he can gain is like 30 points and that won't be enough to put him into mathematical contention and here he is in pit road along with the 22. There's the seven of Johnny Gardner who looked like he was the first one that came out of the pits under the first group of cars that elected the pit. But you still gotta wonder about who will be the leader when we get back to racing. Right now Chris Michaels trying to cycle out but no right now Gardner would be ahead. Michaels, LeDuc, Sakuli all getting back out onto the racetrack after finishing up their pit stops. But I got a feeling they're going to have to pit one more time before the race concludes. There's the 22 and the 51. Who's going to cycle around as the leader? Could the 22 hold it off? I don't think he will. The seven's just really, really fast, and here he comes. And officially, it looks like Johnny Gardner is going to cycle back around as the race leader. And he's got Dorian Face Puncher. Or no, maybe Dorian Face Puncher is going to be the leader. I actually didn't think. I thought he was on the tail end of the lead lap. But no, he's up here battling with Gardner for the lead. So never mind that. So now the leader is Dorian Face Puncher, second is Johnny Gardner, third is Trent Dunham, fourth Rafael Duke, fifth Joshua Sikuli, sixth James McLeod, seventh Chris Michaels, eighth JT Bryant, ninth is Benjamin Miles, tenth Phil Parker, eleventh Charles Sanford, twelfth Emmanuel Hartnett, thirteenth Carson Gump, fourteenth Sean Galligan, fifteenth Tim Walsh, sixteenth Mark Lane, seventeenth is Austin LaPlante, 18th Jake Rogers, 19th DJ Curtis, 20th Matt McIntyre, 21st Jessica Shelton, 22nd Matt Haas, 23rd Paul Minnick, 24th Chris Dollarton, 25th Preston Bloor, 26th Zach Flickinger, 27th Dylan Jacobs, 28th Kyle Keith, and then 29th is William Brock, and then two cars a lap down, Jay Jefferson and Jake Baskinger. Oh, I think the 61, he stayed out for the longest time. He's coming in the pit road now. And I think this might give him a bit of an advantage because he stayed out the longest. Stayed out for 12, 13 extra laps. So if everybody has to pit with about four or five laps to go, Dorian Face Puncher could have the advantage because he was the last one to pit. And so he could get the possible advantage of winning this race if we stay green the rest of the way. But Johnny Gardner now has the race lead. Three wide for second. McLeod, LaDuke, and Sakuli, all of them chasers. But it looks like McLeod gets the advantage right there at the line. Will he get the advantage in turns one and two? 
He opened the door for Chris Michaels to come in and now it's three wide for the lead. McLeod, Michaels, and Gardner battle it out. Michaels is going to get a huge run, but he opened the bottom for Rafaela Duke to try and enter into the fray, but he's going to shut the door on the 99 for now, but it looks like McLeod's going to lead here at the line, and he does. Let's see if the bottom kicks in here in 1 and 2, and I think it will. There goes the 17. There's Dorian Face Puncher. He has gone a lap down. But I got a feeling he could be in the catbird seat to potentially win this race on fuel mileage. Depending on when or if these guys up here in the lead have to pit one more time. And I think they will have to with about four to five laps to go. That or Dorian Face Puncher had to come back in to top off on gas because they didn't get all the fuel in. That could be a scenario. We just don't know. But right now, Chris Michaels has the top position and a fight for second between Joshua Sikuli and Rafael Duke. Trent Dunham slowing down. I think this is one of the signs. Here comes Trent and Gardner into pit road. Hardnet's coming in as well. Looks like those are the only three who elected to come in the pit road right now. I think it might be a couple more laps before we see everyone else start coming in. I still got a feeling potentially Face Puncher could be in the best position to pull this off based on gas. Let's stay up here at the front and keep an eye on these guys. Oh, Sakuli slowing down. He's coming in along with Sanford, Miles, Parker, and Galligan. Here comes more. Matt McIntyre is coming in. Minnick is coming in. LaPlante. Here comes more. Some of the cars in the back of the field. But now the top three have broken away from everybody as a result of that. Michaels, LaDuc, and McLeod. But let's see if these guys start slowing down to come in. LaDuke's slowing down, and I think Chris is slowing down. Here they come, but McLeod stays out. JT Brunt going to stay out, so we're back, kind of back to where we were about 10 laps ago. With the 51 and the 22 staying out. So they're going to be the last ones to pit out of the leaders. Dorian Face Puncher is going to be a bit of a questionable one. Trying to look around for the 62 if I can find him. Oh, there he is. He's staying out. Still looking to get his lap back, but he has to go around the 51 and the 22 in order to make that work. I got a feeling we could be in for a fuel mileage win like none other. On a non-road course. And now McLeod and Bryant have come in, and also Dollarton was the one was a guy who didn't come in, and now he is in the pit road. I don't know. Face Puncher may not be able to pull this off. I'm not sure. We'll see. But I think he does get back on the lead lap now, as I'm looking for him. Well, he's the first car lap down, but I think he is going to get around everyone safely, so I think he will be back on the lead lap. And potentially, I don't know, I don't know if he's going to get the lead or not. It's going to be uh, interesting to see what happens. I don't know, this could be the lead right here between the 79 and the 17. Face Puncher is back on the lead lap in 14th, but I got a feeling that some of the scoring is a bit confusing. Just trying to look for the 22 and the 51, and they are ahead of the 79. I don't know. I think McLeod may have the lead. It's going to be, it's like I said, it's going to be confusing with scoring until we get everything sorted out. But yes, it does look like actually McLeod is going to be the leader, so Face Puncher's strategy will not work out. 
Although he is scored in 13th right now. And he has been reeling in some of the drivers up ahead of him. But I don't think it's going to be enough to really get into the top 10. But yeah, we got a new leader, James McLeod. And McLeod trying to be the first driver this season to get three wins. Same with Sukuli. Sukuli has won twice. Michaels, however, is looking to try and get his first win of the season. William Brock wanted a slower damaged race cars from that big one that happened on lap one. McLeod currently has the advantage over the 79. The 17 may be buying his time a little bit. And just to see what these two up ahead of him do. Three to go at the line. And Chris Michaels actually lost time on the top two. Chris Michaels is going to have to hope that these two, the 51 and the 79, start to race it out if he's going to have any chance of getting something to work. And I think Face Puncher, no, he couldn't make it on gas the rest of the way, so he had to come to pit road. Tough luck for the 62. Two laps to go here at the line for James McLeod to get his third win. Sakuli slowly losing the 51 a little bit. He needs to try and run a lower groove if he's going to have any chance of getting to the 51's back bumper. Meanwhile, the 17, he's just too far behind to really make anything happen. So it looks like the race is going to come down to these two. Who's going to get their who's going to get their third win this season? Will it be McLeod or will it be Sakuli? White flag is displaying here at California. The margin almost 3 tenths of a second. Sakuli's going to have to really push it if he's going to have any hope of winning this race. Other than that, I think McLeod may have this in the bag. No lap car is going to be around to hold them up. The closest one is Kyle Keep, but he's all the way coming out of turn four now. And these leaders are going through three, getting ready to come off of four. And it's going to be all James McLeod officially coming out of turn four. Checkered flag getting ready to wave. James McLeod wins the Auto Club 400, or excuse me, the California 400 at California Speedway. Great pit stops. Managed to make it all work out. And the 51, James McLeod, gets his third win this season. Unfortunately, however, that I don't think will be enough to put him within mathematical contention of being in the championship hunt for next week's finale at Kansas. But still, what a way to win this race in order to try and get within reach. And speaking of getting within reach, Joshua Sakuli was within reach of the win, finishing out in second, but again, similar to McLeod, I don't think it's going to be enough to put him in contention for the championship anymore. Chris Michaels, so close to getting that win, but still finishes out in third. JT Bryant with a solid run in fourth, and Emmanuel Hardnett with a great run in fifth. Rafael Oduk, he was pretty much top ten all day, Came through in 6. Johnny Gardner with a solid run in 7. Sean Galligan, great run in 8th. Trent Dunham finishing out in ninth, And then Phil Parker with a great run in 10th. Rest of the top 20 was Charles Sanford, Carson Gum, Mark Lane, Chris Dollerton, Benjamin Miles, DJ Curtis, Tim Walsh, Matt McIntyre, Jessica Sheldon, Jake Rogers. Rest of the lead lap cars were Preston Plourd, Matt Haas, Paul Minnick, Austin LaPlante, Zach Flickinger, Dylan Jacobs, Kyle Keith. Rest of the cars I finished were a lap or more down. William Brock, Dorian Face Puncher, Jake Baskinger, and Jay Jefferson. Everyone else was out of the race after the first caution, and they were Ashlyn Boyd, Jonathan Zorlin, David Rivera, Dylan Young, James Qualls, Dylan Thoreau, Seth Cole, Anthony McCreary, Pichu London, Tim Fiegel, and Dylan Poteet. Well, that does it for our coverage here at California. One race to go to determine the champion. And it's going to be 
the Banquet 400 at Kansas, the best racetrack on the schedule. We're going to be in for probably the best race of the season. But until then, here are your results, rookie points, chase points, and regular points heading into the finale at Kansas. And this is Levi McIntyre, signing off.